Hi everybody, Cathy Syrup from Confident Leader Journey here. Um, this is a remake of an earlier vlog because the sound quality was so poor. So if it sounds familiar, it's probably because you watched the earlier version where I didn't have the headset on and it turns out that doesn't work that well with my system. So in today's vlog, I'm going to address something that's had me a little bit concerned. I keep seeing lots of posts where people are talking about the negativity uh, of being in your comfort zone and that in order to learn and grow and develop we need to be out in stretch so much of the time and some people suggest there's a learning zone as well but none of these models addresses two things one why where you are matters when we're looking at learning growth mindset etc and two how people end up in burnout. So I have a model I use for looking at learning, growth mindset, uh, achievement and performance. And of course, those of you who know me, we know that I've written a book about confidence. So my model is based on confidence mapping. So if you think about it, one of the prerequisites for learning and for having a growth mindset is that you feel safe emotionally, physically, mentally, and that you have confidence so that you can relax and open your mind and allow new ideas in without feeling threatened, without worrying about negative consequences of changing things. You need to feel safe and that is the essence of feeling confident. So if we take a confidence based approach to this whole idea of comfort zones, stretch zones, etc., what happens? Well, interestingly, when I work with my clients, we who have concerns about achieving their goals, etc., what we often start with is something I call confidence mapping. In fact, it should be called unconfidence mapping, but I'll explain that in a minute. And as explained in the book, it's actually the first step of identifying what's going on is looking at how confident you feel about things and putting them down on a piece of paper. So how do we do this? Here's the easiest thing to do. I'm just gonna get you to outline it and then I'll explain how it works. So if you take a piece of paper, just a regular piece of A4 paper and put a dot in the center of it, and then draw a line from side to side and a line from top to bottom. At that dot, put the number zero. When we're thinking about how unconfident we are about things, we generally, when we're born, we have zero unconfidence. And there's a lot of things in life we have zero unconfidence about. It's kind of like our natural state, okay? And then at the other end of that line that goes side to side, put the number 10 on each side then find the matching place on the vertical line and draw a circle. So on this page, it'll be across there and then the circle would go round here, joining all those, joining those tens together. Now we generally work on a scale of zero to 10. So if zero is no unconfidence whatsoever, what's 10? 10 is we are so unconfident, we're actually in a state of panic. We can't think, we can't process things. We just, even thinking about doing that thing terrifies us so much, it puts us in a state of fight, flight, freeze or fawn. It really is not a nice place to be. And it's a generally accepted fact that if you deliberately put yourselves in those situations, you actually can cause yourself some damage emotionally. And it does damage your confidence in the long run. So let's put that 10 out there. And then all I'd like you to do is think about two, uh, three other numbers. Find the halfway point, that's your five, and draw a circle there. And then decide where your three and where your eight is. Okay. Now what you've got there is you've got four circles. And I'm gonna tell you what each of those circles stands for and how it relates to the discussion about the comfort zone that people are making. And how to know when you're in a place where you can learn effectively, grow effectively, be open to change. And how to know when you're in a place that's going to lead you to burnout. So let's have a look at these zones. Let's start with the zero to three. 
That is the comfort zone that so many people talk about. And so many people talk about it negatively. Zero to three is where you don't really have to think about anything when you do it. It's, it's a bit like it's an automatic, it's autopilot, if you like. And so many people talk about this as this is where you can get complacent. This is where you kind of rest on your laurels. This is where there's no motivation to change. And, and they're right. They're right. It is all of those things. However, it's also where you go and where you feel totally safe, comfortable and relaxed. And what a wonderful place that is to be in. It's where you can talk about things without any fear or internal conflict, without any uncertainty. So here's the thing about the comfort zone. It is essential to spend time in your comfort zone every year, every month, every week, every day. It's where we recharge our batteries. It's where we feel safest. It's where sometimes when we're sitting in our comfort zone is where the great ideas come to us. Okay. So having some time in your comfort zone is critical for learning, growing, changing and developing. So one of my comfort zones is out on a walk with my dog who's sitting down here in the woods on a nice day. We'll go out for a walk. I'll be throwing sticks for her into the water and I'll be very comfortable and relaxed. And suddenly an idea will come into my head for a vlog, for a topic, for a course, for a program, for a challenging situation I'm dealing with. When I'm comfortable and my brain is relaxed, that's when those ideas can come in. OK, so there are positives about that comfort zone not just negatives. Now, obviously we can get complacent as well. I remember once I was uh, teaching a course, I was doing Belbin team roles uh, at an organization and somebody came out of a workshop I'd just run and said, you've obviously done that lots of times before. And I realized I'd gone on autopilot during the presentation, which wasn't, necess wasn't a good thing. It was a bit more of a performance, a script, a ritual or a routine, if you like. And I hadn't made those individual connections with the participants. I hadn't really treated it as something fresh and original. So it, it is something to be aware of that there's huge power in being in your comfort zone, but there's also a time and a place for it. And that living completely in your comfort zone isn't necessarily what you might want to do if you want to be a confident leader, if you want to be performing well at work or an effective team member. So let's look at some of the other zones. Let's go right to the other side of the circles, that eight to ten. If you say to yourself, on a score of zero to ten, how unconfident do I feel about doing this activity? And you say eight, nine or ten, you really shouldn't do it. So for me, that would be if someone said, here, here's a lovely horse, go and ride a cross country course on him, would you? Just the thought of that makes me feel sick. So why do it? It puts me into such extreme unconfidence that I'm actually setting myself up for failure by going there. Now, you remember before we've talked about the issue of neuroscience, the neuroscience of conflict. When there's a threat and your brain doesn't think that you're going to be 100 percent safe, things start to happen in the brain. OK, and so what happens is as soon as there's a sense of threat, the amygdala takes all the resources from the prefrontal cortex, which is where your conscious rational thought is, and hijacks it all to deal with the threat. And it does very subtle things as well, such as even reinterpreting everything in the, in the light of this threat it now is feeling. So if I start thinking about riding a cross country course, it actually stops me from thinking clearly and means I'm not able to cope or come up with a plan for dealing with that situation. So being in the panic zone is not helpful. So let's come just inside the panic zone. Let's look at somewhere where we feel a little bit of anxiety. We're not confident that we can do this job. In fact, it's gonna be a stretch to do it. That's the five to eight. So when I go, how do I feel about uh, doing this presentation? Somebody's just asked me to do a presentation on a topic I know nothing about. It's, it's in one hour to an audience I don't know. Mm. Okay, I'm probably going to be at a seven on that. I am in the stretch zone. And one of the great things about the stretch zone is, is it kind of sounds like how it feels for you. You do feel stretched. It's going to be a challenge to do it. Okay. 
Now, what's interesting about the stretch zone is so many people say that's where you need to be to learn and grow. And in fact, yeah, it can be good to go into the stretch zone now and again to stretch yourself, okay, to try something new. However, if you live in the stretch zone, you are fundamentally in level one conflict all the time because there's a little bit of a threat due to that bit of unconfidence that's there. And if you stay in there too long, that's when you get burnout. If you look at people who live in the stretch zone, too long in the stretch zone invariably leads to burnout. So we have to be very careful with the stretch zone. We have to go into it judiciously. Okay? Go in and stretch yourself by all means, but then come back to the comfort zone to recharge, renew, etc. So there's one circle left, the circle that's three to five. This is your confidence zone. Well, in fact, from zero to five is your confidence zone. But three to five is where you are still confident you can do the thing. And there's no conflict response there. So you're fully engaged with your conscious mind working for you, with your unconscious mind supporting you. And because you've got that zero to three of comfort there, you feel safe and secure and comfortable exploring these things. So three to five is when you are confident enough to learn, to have a growth mindset, to try new things. So for example, for me, that would be if somebody said, will you do a presentation on your book to an audience you don't know in an hour? I'd be a four, four and a half on that. I would be in my confidence zone because I know the material. Okay. Now, this is really important for us as leaders. Are we in a panic zone? If so, we're not thinking rationally. Are we living in the stretch zone, in which case we're going to burn out and probably not be as effective as we could? Are we in our comfort zone and is it to recharge, which is good? Or are we now tipping into complacency, which is not so good? Or are we living in that confidence zone, that three to five zone where our conscious and unconscious mind are working together? We are effective and we are performing at a high level. Now, in the next vlog, I'm going to look at what we can do to bring ourselves into that confidence zone. So let's say something's making us think it's going to be scary and we're at a seven. The mission isn't do we do it or not. The question is, how can we bring that back from a seven down to a four, three and a half, four and a half, so that it's right in our performance zone? And that's what I'll look at in the next vlog. So there you go. A way of looking at where you are and where you need to be to be an effective, confident leader. Okay, find us at Confident Leader Journey Community uh, on Facebook. Look forward to seeing you there. And uh, you can also get links to the shorter blogs, which reiterate the vlogs for you if you prefer to have them in a reading format. Okay, see you soon.